lot of good songs this morning, a lot of good words, and as I often say, I hope you are uh, paying attention to the words, I hope you are um, not just singing it out of habit, but praising our, our, our Lord and, and Savior. I know we uh, all want to be back together, and I, wanna, I want you to think about this, so why do you want to be back uh, as a body here in the church? Uh, is it because we miss our friends? Is it because we uh, miss our Sunday school class or whatever the reasons? All good reasons, but the most important should be that we want to be back as the church worshiping our Lord and Savior. That we miss worshiping him as a, as a corporate people together as God wants us to. We're going to talk about... Uh, Families, uh, over the next uh, few weeks, we're going to talk a little bit more about babies this week. Um, we love our children. There's something about a, a, a baby that is, is just precious. Uh, Cindy and I just love to uh, uh, FaceTime with our granddaughter in Michigan and watch her play. And yesterday she was on the swing and Joe was swinging her and had the cameras on her back uh, watching her go out and back as he was pushing her. And all of a sudden, there in the yard goes a little bunny rabbit, and one runs right up. The sad thing was, not too far behind it was a cat. Uh, so as we're, we're trying to, as Joe's trying to, don't look, don't look. Uh, we try to protect our, our kids and grandkids from those type of things, but it's part of life, you know, and it, it stinks at some times. But... Uh, um, we love our kids. This morning, got a Snapchat uh, from our other granddaughter, who's eight months old, and she was watching. It was watching us on the screen, Cindy and I singing, and just how how that just uh, melts your heart, you know, as you just think about their. Uh, she's eight months old. She doesn't know what's going on. She's watching TV, but for us, it's just just precious that she is doing that, and um, we just love to. We love our kids. There's something. I think as a society, we love children. We, we protect them because we know they can't protect themselves. We take care of them because we know they can't take care of themselves. We feed them. We do what we need to to uh, raise our children up to, to be good uh, young men and young women. And it's important. One of the hardest things to do in, in preaching is... is um, not preach your opinions, because we've all got opinions. Uh, I've got my opinions, you've got your opinions, and I've off, you know, often said that we, we all have a right to our opinions, uh, but we don't have a right to, to truths, and that's only, only found in God, because he is truth. So, so we've got to sort through opinions, and my own opinions often, and just come back to, Lord, what, what, what are you saying here? What are you saying to me? What are you saying to the church, the body? What do, what do, we, need to, uh, what do we need to hear? Um, there's a lot of division right now in the world. There's a lot of division. There's a lot of uh, chaos. There's a lot of fear, and that comes from Satan. With Jesus, it is peace, there is unity, and I pray for that, that we have peace and unity, even, even in our divided opinions at times, that we would uh, have the grace to just love other people, uh, no matter who they are, no matter what race they are, no matter, uh, no matter, right? Jesus said love, love, and share the good news. Jesus had a lot to say about children. Our little ones. Um, he said that uh, the gar their, each child had a guardian angel. And I, and I believe that. I believe we all have angels around us. I believe there's, there's angels around us right now that we cannot see. I pray almost every day that for, for protection, that the angels would just hold back um, the evil one from, from my family, from the kids, the grandkids, and, and so on. That, Lord, you got this. I, I do that often. We read in, in Mark where Jesus took little children into his, his arms. I just love that, that picture. He took them in his arms and he blessed them. I just wonder what he, what he said, you know. Just, just loved on them and blessed them. He rebuked at the same time his disciples, his leaders, those he was training um, to uh, 
to lead the church when he was gone. He, he, he rebuked them for trying to keep children away from Christ. In Matthew 19, 14, and 15, we read these words. But Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of heaven, catch this, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. And he placed his hands on his heads and blessed them before he left. The, the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. Children, you know, the younger they are, no worries in the world. Uh, they're going to be taken care of. They, you know, what? Uh, Amelia, when she comes over, I just put her to sleep. That's Grandpa's job. And she'll just lay in my arms and cuddle. And she starts, her eyes, you know, just start to close more and more. And she yawns. And then she's out. But when she wakes up, you just look at her and her eyes go wide open and she just starts to smile and to grin and she she's just knows that she's taken care of. And Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is, is like these children that just enjoy life, that know that they're taken care of, that there's not a worry. And I think we, we need to become more that way. That we're concerned about life, we're concerned, but we're not so worried that we're in fear and panic and division. But we have a peace and an understanding that that God has got this. When Cindy and I were having children some tomorrow, 35 years ago, um, Joe's birthday is tomorrow. Uh, we, you know, we went in for those ultrasounds, and I don't even know if I went in for those ultrasounds. Did I? No, I didn't go in for those ultrasounds, Cindy's telling me. Uh, But Cindy would bring the pictures home, right? And, you know, it was like, okay, here's the head, here's the the feet, uh, the body, and it it just looked like a fuzzy off TV screen off air, right? You you just couldn't tell what it was. Um, But today, I mean, 3D and 4D machines uh, went into ultrasound for... Uh, one of our grand, uh, granddaughters, and it was just phenomenal. I mean, uh, they just show you the head and the, and the, the feet and the nose and the eyes, and it still looked like an alien, you know, but just, just a beautiful person there. You could just see everything. It's amazing. And as we, we get more technology, we, we get a glimpse of God's awesomeness, of his, his goodness, his glory, his beauty. That of our children, of our grandchildren. Children are designed and formed by God. We need to remember that. You and I were designed and formed by God. Psalms 139, 13 through 14 says, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. And you see that with these ultrasounds. And the psalmist says, Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. I'm amazed at at the human body and what it can do. And as I get older, what it can't do anymore. You know, I think many of us are in that. But what what a complex, how how delicate we are, and yet how, how strong we are. Our mind, everything works together. Those voluntary muscles and involuntary muscles, it's just working as one. But we're not only designed and formed by God, but we're seen by God. He knows us. It's not like we're, he created us and, and let us, just left us, but he knows us. In Psalm 22.10 it says, I was thrust into your arms at birth. You have been my God from the moment I was born. And in Psalm 139, 15 and 16, You watched me. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was being woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. He sees us. He creates us. He forms us. He also acknowledges us and values us in children. In Psalm 22 Verse 30 and 31, our children will also serve him, 
future generations will hear about the wonders of the Lord. His righteous acts will be told to those not yet born. They will hear about everything he has done. In Psalm 78, 6, so that the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born, and they in turn will teach their own children. In Psalm 102, 18, let this be recorded for future generations so that the people will not yet born will praise the Lord. That's why it's so important that we teach our children to teach their children about Christ. It is the most important thing in the world because he is the Savior. He is our Redeemer. He is the one that that gets us into heaven. He is the one that delights us into heaven, that loves us so much. He is the one for for our sorrow. He's the one that will take our a pain away once and for all, for eternity. He's the one that has conquered death, Jesus. Also says that we are given wisdom from God. Psalm 51, 6 says, but you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there, that even in our womb, that, that God teaches us wisdom teaches our children wisdom. That's why we pray for our children. That's why we recite verses and, uh, and play Christian songs and good stuff. So are, are even in the womb, we are being taught. The Bible speaks of children being brought out of the womb by God. In Psalm 22, 9 through 10, it says, Yet you brought me safely from my mother's womb. It led me to trust you at my mother's breast. I was thrust into your arms at birth. You have been my God from the moment I was born. And in Psalm 71, 6, yes, you have been with me from birth. From my mother's womb, you have cared for me. No wonder I am always praising you. We must not lose that praise, that gratitude of our, of our God, our creator, our savior, our everything, the one who gives us life, the one who, who gave us another beautiful day Though it feels like fall, I think we had our summer and fall's here, winter's, winter's just around the corner, you know, but that's upstate New York. Uh, but we praise God. Another beautiful day. And the God's original design, his creation was for families. When he created us, when he created the world, it was, it was good, and everything he did was good. In Genesis 1.28, it says... Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. So God's original creation was that there would be families that would be fruitful, multiply, and and rule of the world to take care of it. But because of sin, uh, that original design is uh, really messed up, and we can see that. And it goes on and talks about Jesus are described, or their children are described as a heritage and reward. And the psalmist says in uh, chapter 127, 3 through 5, the children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like heroes in the warrior's head. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. He will not be put to shame when he confronts his accuser at the gates. What a blessing to have children. And I know many of you are struggling right now because your children are home and you're, you're together and, and you're, you're, you're experiencing that and the emotions are high. And, and even with families, husbands and wives, there's, there's, uh, I've just heard of so many that are just struggling right now. Because, because we're, we're not just meant to be together constantly confined like this. So come back, to, come back to the Lord. Come back to what a, what a privilege, what an honor to be created the way I am and to be with who God has given to me. Try to, try to take some break from each other the best you can, from your children, spouse, whatever. You know yourself, but go find the Lord. Talk to him and, and let him heal those emotions. A lot of instances in the Bible were not having children was a great heartache. Uh, as we re- read about Hannah 
and Sarah in the Old Testament. Um, it's tough. It's tough because families is, is what God had designed for us from the beginning. We also read about when Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to visit Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. And it says in Luke one forty four these words, <clears throat> Elizabeth speaking, When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Isn't that awesome? Then when Mary came, who was pregnant with Jesus, and got near to Elizabeth, who was pregnant with John the Baptist, John the Baptist leaped with joy in the womb. Could feel, could hear, could know, could feel expression, and let that out. How wonderfully and complex we are designed, our children and all of us. And one that's very special to me, the Bible speaks that grandchildren are a great source of delight. They are a great source of delight. Proverbs 17, 6, <clears throat> grandchildren are the crowning glory of the aged. Parents are the pride of their children. Grandchildren are the crowning glory of the aged. I don't know if I'd put myself in the aged part yet, but they are a crowning glory in my life, in yours too, those who have grandchildren. What a blessing it is to just hold them and take care of them and, and know that you've got them. I think that, that's what God does with us. We, uh, we learn a lot as we become parents of, of the relationship between uh, parent and child as it compares to the relationship between God and us. We are imperfect in an imperfect world, and God is, is perfect and does everything perfectly. But we see those uh, distinctions, those things that go together, that I love my children, I love my grandchildren, I would do anything for them, I would die for them. We see that as God did for us. We see that we delight in our children, as, as God does as we do. The joy they bring us, the pride in our children. Becoming a, a parent is, is a beautiful thing. A, a, a gift from God, not only to, to train us and to help us and to guide us, uh, uh, but to bring us closer to the Father. And remember that God has a unique plan for every single child. It means you, too, because we were all children once. Every single child. Jeremiah 1.5 says... I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. And Paul says in, in his letter to Galatia, but even before I was born, God chose me. Paul says, God chose me and called me by his marvelous grace that it pleased him to reveal his son to me so I would proclaim the good news about Jesus to the Gentiles. When this happened, I did not rush out to consult with any human being. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for each and every one of us. A unique plan. Search and find out what that is. Maybe it's just being who you are. That's, that's, that's the easiest thing to do. Do what God has called you to do. Be obedient to that. And that's it. It's precious. Don't compare yourself to someone else. Don't compare yourself to someone you want to be like. Learn from them and grow from them. But be yourself in whom Christ created you to be. We think about our children. Oh, what are they going to grow up and be someday? Never would imagine what my boys turned out and what, the, what they're doing, right? But I, I, they love what they're doing, and I love they, that they love what they're doing. They, they are who they are, and I praise God for that. Again, it's so important that we dedicate our children to the Lord. And dedicating our children, as it's talked about um, often in the Old, Old Testament, dedicating our children is just giving them back to God. Just say, Lord, Lord, here. 
Here's my children, they are yours. And sometimes that's the hardest thing to do, but it's, it's the best thing to do. That, Lord, not my will be done in their lives, but your will be done in their lives. Lord, may they know you. Lord, may the Holy Spirit just fill them, protect them. And, Lord, you have them and guide them in a great relationship with you. And I just step back and, and do my part. Lord, what can I do? Lord, show me how to, how to love them. Lord, show me how to uh, be there for them. Lord, show me how to help them without overstepping boundaries. Lord, let me not squash their, their dreams, but let me come alongside and guide and give them wisdom that you give to me, to the children. It's, it's so important that we, we understand that we are giving our children back to God. It's, it's important that we give everything we've got back to God because he gave it to us. It is gifts, our homes, our houses, our children, our families, our jobs, our life, when it boils down to it, given to us by God. But through all that, we are sinful from conception. We are sinful. Psalm 51.5 says, For I was born a sinner, Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. It's a crazy world that we live in. We've gone from the pandemic to riots. We all have our opinions on those things. The horrific death of a a man that needed it didn't need to happen. George Floyd, was it racism? I don't know, was it a power trip? I don't know. Was it both? I do know that sin was involved in it. And we can make all the laws in the world, but it's not going to stop power trips. It's not going to stop racism. It's not going to stop hate. Only Jesus, through the love of Christ, can it be stopped? And I challenge us. I challenge myself. I don't know what it's like to be black. I don't know what it's like to be Asian. I don't like know what it's like to be Spanish. I wasn't born that way. But I know God loves these people as much as he loves me. And we like to divide and, and, and compare. And, and, and the church is one that is unified with our eyes on Christ. We are just lovers of Christ. And I challenge us to, to reach out, find a way to those that are different from us and that we would share God's love with them. We see all these riots and destruction on TV and yet what we don't see is a people coming behind them, cleaning them up. Darren Pullen this morning and Mariah are headed to Rochester to clean up. Uh, I saw a few videos of, of people coming in and just cleaning things up. Look at the good and know that Christ is in it. How do we respond? Jeremiah fifteen nineteen says these words. This is how the Lord responds. If you return to me, I will restore you so you can continue to serve me. If you speak good words... Rather than worthless ones, you will be my spokesman. How powerful is that? If you speak good words, not worthless ones. And then it goes on and says, you must influence them. Do not let them influence you. And that's where we need to be in the word. We need to be in God's word. We need to know the truth. So we are influenced by the truth so we can influence our community for good, for God. And not be influenced by others and others' opinions that may not be the truth. And be careful of this. I try to be careful, careful of this myself. That I go and talk to the Lord first. Lord, help me here. I don't understand. Because we can follow Christ and have, have vast opinions not necessarily wrong on either side. 
How do we come together in unity for the kingdom? God's plan for saving you and I and everyone in the world involved a newborn baby. Isaiah 17, or 714 says, All right then, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. I cannot fathom that. Astronauts went out in space yesterday. Awesome, cool, right? They get up there and they put a thumb, thumb in front of their face and they can block out the earth. How small we are. And yet God who created everything became like us on this tiny little planet because of his great love for us. I'm going to read Luke 2, 6 through 14, some of my favorite passages in the Bible. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him in snuggling strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds in the fields nearby guarding their flocks of sheep and suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of God's glory surrounded them and they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem in the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others. The armies of heaven praising God and saying, glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Kyle Pullen, I should say Pastor Kyle Pullen, put these words out on his Facebook. Micah 6, 6 through 8. It says, what can we bring to the Lord? What kind of offering should we give him? Should we bow before God with offerings of yearling calves? Should we offer him thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Should we sacrifice our firstborn children to pay for our sins? No, O oh people. The Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you. Do what is right to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Isn't that powerful? Do what is right. Stand up for just injustice. Stand up for it. To love mercy. To have mercy with people. For God has had mercy with us. And walk humbly with God. Understand that I am not God and he is. His ways are true and my ways are not. My opinions don't matter. His does. As the team gets, comes up to, to close, just a couple more thoughts. I always come back to Jesus' prayer before he leaves this world. In John 17, through 23, it says, I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one talking about the disciples. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the, the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. May we be in unity. One last thought before we sing. Today is Pentecost Sunday when the Holy Spirit came down on the disciples and the crowds and, and, and Peter just prayed a repentance. Turn back to God. Now, there's two things we can do here, and there's two things that happens in life. We can deny that and quench that fire, or we can let that fire of the Holy Spirit burn in us and be transformed. The world's a mess today because we have 
both. Those where the Holy Spirit is changing and people are loving and those who have rejected. And it is a battle. It is a spiritual battle. It is a spiritual battle of the, the heavens that is going on right now that we can't see. And we get the aftermath here. But God is going to come and he's going to change it. Take care of it. But let's do our part. Let's reach out. Let's love better. We can, we can always be transformed more. We can always love better. We can always show more mercy as we stand in the truth of God's word. Let us sing.